Hi, this is Christy with Christy Cole Artistry and tonight I'm going to show you how I mix my paints for my Dutch pours. Um, these are some of the um, items that I used for mixing my paint. So um, let's get started. First, I use these squeeze bottles. These squeeze bottles are um, sold at Hobby Lobby. I can get two for $3.49, so it's really a good deal. They have a nice snug cap to them. Um, there's this style where it connects, or there's also this style where the top actually comes off. So I like these bottles. They're clear, and I can label them with either magic, magic marker or labels, um, and I can take the labels off if I don't want to refill the bottle with that particular color. So the next thing, besides the bottles, is my scale. So I got this scale at my local Axeman store, and it was $14.95, which I thought was a really good deal. So here's what the scale looks like. And basically, it's like your average um, scale. So you, when you turn it on, um, it will go to zero. If you put something on there, of course, you're going to have to tar it out to zero it out. And then from there, we will um, add our ingredients, and that will be in just a minute. The next item is my Floetrol. Floetrol is used to um, loosen the paint up so that um, it will flow easily. Um, it is a binder, so it will eventually dry. Um, it does dry matte, however, if you have gloss paints, um, it will, it will uh, pick up the gloss somewhat, um, but it will mute them, so good to know for later use. Um, water, you're going to need water because I mix my paints with Floetrol and water. And then paint. So I use a variety of paint depending on which store I'm at, um, whether it's Michael's or Hobby Lobby or um, um, even Lowe's is selling paint now. So I get my paints at a, a lot of different places. I also buy them at Blick um, because we, f we do have one in Minnesota here and that's where I am. So these first two paints are Master Touch and they're from Hobby Lobby. Um, I also use a lot of Liquid Tex Basics because I like the colors that they have. So I have um, many different varieties of colors in Liquitex Basic, and I also love my Artist Loft. Now, some people say that um, using these more, I'm going to call them professional, acrylic paints works better. But I have bought 50 cent jars of um, apple barrel paint at Walmart. And there are two colors that I especially like in my paintings. One is called Blue Bonnet, and one is called Blue... C, I think it is, or something like that. There's two blues that I just can't find in any of these other colors, and um, I think the colors turn out just fine when you mix them with Floetrol and water. I don't think you, you lose a lot of color with those. So um, use what you like and what works best for you. So again, these paints, I'm, all, I'm going to mix them all with Floetrol and water, and I'll tell you my um, ingredients in just a few minutes. Not my ingredients, I'll tell you my ratios in just a few minutes. So let's move the paints out of the way for now. And um, I think we'll leave these ones right here because we'll, these are the ones we'll use. Um, I also keep my spatulas handy. Um, right now I have these spatulas. I know um, one of my favorite artists, Camilla Sirocco, Sirocco uses um, an XO uh, spatula. It's a nice smooth one. It doesn't have these ridges on it. So when I can finally find one, I'll probably be purchasing that. But these work just fine. I got them at the Goodwill um, and they work fine for what I do. Next, I always keep cups handy when I am um, getting ready to mix my paint. I may not need them, but if I mix too much or decide that I'm going to pour tonight, then I will want to mix up um, extra batch just so I can use it for the pouring tonight. Okay. Next, you'll want to have some sort of strainer and funnel. Um, the strainer is because, as you can see by my strainer, the little white marks in here, uh, Floetrol tends to get cloggy. It makes up little, um, sorry, I'm going to use the word boogers, 
because that's what they are. Um, and they get into the strainer and it clogs the strainer. So uh, two things, number one, have a strainer for Floetrol and, and the second thing is wash it out when you're done. The funnel is because for these smaller bottles, it's really easy if you put the funnel in to pour, pour the paint and the Floetrol and the water into the bottle without it going all over the place. I've tried it without and it just doesn't work for me. So that is all my ingredients for mixing my paints. So next, we're gonna actually start mixing. So again, I know you can't see this. Um, yeah, I know you can't see this, but what I'm gonna do is, hang on. I'm gonna bring you down closer to the uh, scale so that you can actually see what I'm doing. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're back. So this scale again, um, simply what I am going to do, and I'm gonna try to do this toward you so that you can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna turn the scale on and it's gonna zero itself out. We're then gonna put the bottle on the scale, okay? And then we're going to use the tar. Basically we're telling the scale that we want the weight of this bottle to go away because all we're going to be or, uh, weighing is the actual paint flow trial and water. So I'm going to hit the tar button and that will zero it out. Now I know in my recipe for um, my paints, I use the same recipe that Canela Sirocco does, and it is a ratio of 80 grams of Floetrol. So we're gonna use 80 grams of Floetrol first. Okay, and again, I use my combination of my strainer on top of my funnel when I'm pouring, and then I'm gonna hold it up here because I don't want the weight of it measuring on here. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do this kind of backward. So I'm going to watch to get 80 grams of Floetrol. Okay, we're at 72, just a little bit more. Floetrol's a bit heavy, so that's a good thing to remember too, is that uh, out of these items, Floetrol is heavy, and just a few drops can add. So, don't know if you can see it, but just those few drops added two grams. Oh, that's too much. So here we go. Oop. All right, so if we overdo, just try to catch it. And then we'll move that off of there. And let me wipe the bottle off. I don't want my new bottles all messy. Okay, so now we've got, um, it says 83. No, it says 90. Um, that's because I moved the bottle. If you don't move the bottle, you'll be fine. I do have to pour off just a hair though. Okay, yeah, I don't know why it's saying, oh, 105 minus the bottle, so that's 80. Okay, so again, if you lift it off of there, it's gonna re-weigh re the bottle weight, so you just need to tar it out again. Okay, so now I put my paints in next. I like to have the Floetrol, then the paint, then the water. It just makes it um, easier to, uh, to um, mix them together. If you mix the paint and the water together, it will start to fall apart and it'll be um, like little scraps in there. And I don't like that. All right, so now we're gonna put in our 40 of paint. And this is my phalo blue, which is one of my favorite colors. So paint takes a little while to add up, but you'll get used to it where like one little squish is usually a gram or so. So you get used to it. It does take a bit in these smaller tubes. So we are up to 16 and we need 40, 28. I'm reading this upside down. I hope that's not 58. I'm gonna turn this, sorry. I gotta turn this around. Yeah, 28. Okay, just don't want to overdo. Um, and again, this is a great way to uh, have your paints, um, sp spread your paints out a little bit so they, you're not using so much. I know on regular acrylic you use it full bore, but on here you don't have to. So we're at 34 and 37, 39, and one little squirt should do us. 40. Okay. So this was a new tube 
So I probably used, let's see, 40, um, because it's only 118 milligrams, I probably used a l less than half. I think that was a new one. Okay, so now we've got 40. We're going to tar it out again. And for my water, I used 30 grams. So 80 Floetrol, 40 paint, 30 water. And with the 30 water, you can um, use more or less. I would use less, if anything. Okay. Because this is quite liquidy as it is. Okay, we're at 25. Just a little bit more. 6, 20, 8, 30. See how fast the water goes up? Because water weighs something. Okay, so um, you don't want to fill your, your um, paint bottles all the way to the top. And the reason for that is if you fill them all the way to the top, you'll have no way of shaking them up. And these paints really need to be shook up in order to mix all these um, ingredients together. So if you look at the bottom, all the paint is thick, so it goes to the bottom. The water is thin, it stays on top. So make sure your bottles are tight, and then shake, shake, shake. Okay, and I suggest you shake for quite a bit of time. Because also, with these plastic bottles, I found that the, um, the paint sticks to the edge of the bottle, and so you'll see like a wave of paint stuck to there. If you don't continue to shake, that paint is going to stay separated, and that will not look good on your canvas that you have watery paint and then all of a sudden a glop of blue or a glop of paint. So I shake them, and I shake them, and I shake them. Okay. And then, like I said, what I'll do is um, sometimes I just use a magic marker. I know um, some people have really nice label makers. I don't have one yet. So I usually just take a magic marker and I will literally write the paint on the bottle like this. So this one is Liquitex Basics Brilliant Purple, which, as you can tell, I'm almost out of because it's about here. So I need to mix up some more of that. So I'm going to do one more with you because I actually have 20 bottles I need to refill. So I'm just going to do one more with you, but I wanted to show you what, what it looks like when it's done. And again, this is a phalo blue from Liquitex Basics. It's a beautiful color. Okay. All right. Let's do one more. All right. So we're going to turn on the scale. I hope you can see that. I'm going to turn this a little bit this way so I can see it too. Turn on the scale, put your bottle on there, zero it out. Okay? Um, again, we're doing um, 80 grams, okay? 80 grams of Floetrol. I'm just wiping off my funnel because I did get a bunch of blue on there. Okay? I'm using another boost, so I'm not that concerned with it, but okay? Strainer and funnel and pour. Okay, and 80 should go up to about the same amount. 60, 60, 70, so 10 more grams. And again, flow trail is kind of heavy. 73, 75. And 79, 80. Okay, so move that over like that. Next, we're going to put on our paint so that we um, are able to shake it up. I'm going to use a different color. I was going to use this other blue, but I'm going to use this lighter one so that you can see what that looks like. And I really like this color. This is actually uh, Master Touch Acrylic Ocean Green. It's such a pretty color. It goes with blues, it goes with purples, it goes with gold, silvers, coppers, anything. It really looks nice. It even goes with the pinks. Okay, so next I am going to use my... No, I'm not. I'm just going to squirt it in. Okay, we're going to tar it out, and we're going to put in 40 paint. So here we go. You can tell when you're doing these that some of these, like this one, is a thinner body paint, I think, than the Liquitex. Seems to be running a lot better. Or it could just be that the bottle's bigger. 
All right, so we're at 23, 27, 32, 35. I'm going to let that drip down. That should be 40 when it drips down, maybe not. It can get stuck in there. 39. That'll be 40. Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, there. There we go. Now we're at 40. I don't know why that one got stuck up there, but I don't want to take it off the scale because it will mess up my count. But maybe when we add some water, we can get it to go down. No, I don't think so. It's going to be stubborn. Um, I'm going to use this. Now we're going to have to check the paint amount, because I took some out here. Close enough. 40. Okay. So now we're going to do 30 in water. Here we go. We're at 9, 10, 17, 22, 26, 27, 30. Yeah, 31. Went over by here. That's okay. It'll mix in. And um, another reason, see, that's a good thing. Um, another reason why you um, you will um, put the water in these paints is if you are going to have them sitting for a while. So in other words, if I was going to be pouring tonight, um, I would make some more of this in those cups that I showed you, these cups, because they're just five ounce cups and I, I have little lids for them. I would make up extra in here, but I wouldn't put as much water in there. And the um, flow trail and the water mix is sort of like kind of a icky consistency, but you're just gonna take the paint and you're gonna stir it up, okay? And it does take some stirring to get this to mix up. Now, flow trail is a paint extender, and so what will happen is the paint, um, the flow trail will extend the paint so that it, you have more time to get whatever you need to get done before it starts drying. So um, that is why we use this in our, our uh, pour paintings. Here we go. Okay, so this paint is, um, again, mixed up, ready to go. And it is a metallic. So first of all, you can see the sheen on it. I hope you can see that. Let's see if I can go this way. Okay, so there's a nice sheen to it. And when that dries, that metallic is really gonna pop. And if you notice, when you pour it in the cup, it doesn't like leave a glob. It sort of melts right back into it. And I'm not sure. I'm gonna get up and see if I can show you this because it's kind of important. Okay, so. When you're doing it, you want it to just fall off the stick, okay? Just like that. Now, do you see, this is why I didn't add more water to, to this one, okay? Because it's ready to go. The other ones are looser because they're going to sit for a little while, okay? So, that is how I mix my paints. Again, because um, I, I know I tend to talk fast. Um, again, the recipe for me is 80 grams of Floetrol, 40 grams of your paint, and up to 30 grams of water. Okay? Stir it. Find out the consistency that you need. Well, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, again, this is Christy Cole with C. Cole Artistry, and I really thank you for watching. Uh